on the No Time Workers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. All right. So let's hopefully hopefully it works this time. Oh, okay. Uh, how you been, Fern? Uh, doing good. Uh, nothing. Nothing really new. Just staying home. Trying not to go outside. The usual. Same old, same old. Yeah. Uh, lost a bunch of weight. Oh yeah, I actually lost ten pounds because under quarantine I did gain twenty. So under, I'm trying... under quarantine I gained thirty. <laughs> Son of a bitch! So That's I lost, a lot, dude. I'm down. Uh, I'm down fifteen right now. I'm feeling good. All you do is walk, isn't it? Yeah, walk and just not eat shit all the time. I had cheat. I had my cheat meal tonight. What was uh, it? I had. Uh, I went to Jack in the Box. I was gonna get a munchie meal, but it was. Uh, we, I couldn't get there. We were recording, so I couldn't get the gonna get the munchie meal so oh. i got a got the bacon super jack or whatever it is and then uh a large curly fry and then i had a, i had ice cream for dessert and uh, i get the kind of ice cream that like a, a four-year-old girl would like so it's like uh it's like cotton candy bubble gum and there's like chunks of like cake batter and like uh sprinkles in it geez you actually like went all out yeah that's my cheat meal that... I go back to a week of uh, chicken and uh, uh, avocado. Dude, that's like a plagiarism meal, less of a cheat meal. That's like <laughs> that's like fucking cheating on your entire like SAT right there. You know, actually, my uh, coworker actually, because uh, I like always post about uh, the podcast on my Instagram, and she follows me on Instagram, and she asked me, "Is like, oh, where can uh, where can I listen to your podcast?" And I was like, "Don't, don't do that." It's like when my coworkers ask, it's when they ask me about my bands, and I'm like, "You don't." We no, don't. I'm gonna start gatekeeping the podcast. I don't want I don't want my coworkers knowing what what dumb shit I have to say every week. Uh, God, let's get uh let's get label news out of the way so we can bring our guest on. Um, we got uh Ask Severed Self Detroit Hardcore. We're dropping their tape very soon. Uh, we just dropped Sordo and Chikara's uh split cassette as well. Uh, Sordo being uh our our good friends from uh, Oxnard, just straight straight up power violence. Uh, Chikara is a great Swedish uh, crust punk band. Uh, we got stuff from No Nothing, uh, two Jody Faster tapes, some new Corrupt Vision coming soon. Uh, Pisser from the UK, uh, members of Doom, Sore Throat, Revenge of the Psychotronic Man, uh, FCON from Seattle, Knife Club, Dismoral, uh, Endless Storm, Far Staff, Rash Decision, Standard Issue. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming. So that's just yeah. label news for now. Uh, probably going to uh, be. Hold up. I got some stuff too. I forgot. Yeah, we're releasing, yeah, we're releasing the Sensations, their first album. I guess it's a self title, but uh, we're releasing that on Bandcamp Day, and we're also releasing a, a Japanese ska core band called Takayama Utens on cassette as well. Same thing, Bandcamp Day. Uh, I'm only pressing twenty five. Don't ask for more. And as soon as I'm sell out of those, I'm never making any more, <laughs> unless they ask me to. But uh, should we tell? Should we tell people that there's like two no times right now? There's like three. <laughs> Is, don't you have a free section? No, what I'm talking about specifically, like two people like making cassettes for the label. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Fern, cassettes. Fern started making his own tapes, and uh, they're just both under the No Time name. And uh, if that yeah. doesn't get confusing, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'd like to bring on our, our special guest, um, Rancid Sog Brand Lo- Brad Logan. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite Rancid song. Actually, I am the rancid song. The actual human isn't here. I'm the song. Here's the song. <laughs> that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. How how does it feel to be named after Rancid's best song? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's been a while now, and and I mean, you know, I I, I always, you know, I was a big fan of that band, and and uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's like an honor, you know, and and it was totally unexpected. It was a uh, you know, Tim told me he had Tim's, you know, I, I, I wrote him for them for a long time. And, and, uh, um, he was always writing. He's the kind of guy that's like always writing, you know, it's sound check, you know, he's walking around with a, you know, in between, you know, uh, you know, going on stage and, and, you know, just hanging out. He's got a guitar in his hands. He's always writing. And, and, um, yeah. and one day he told me, he's like, Oh yeah, I wrote a song, man. I, I'm calling it Brad Logan. And, and, uh, you know, it's about like, you know, these stories you and I would talk about and, and, uh, you know, because when we were on tour together, we would hang out him and I used to get up pretty early. And, and so we'd be like the early coffee guys, you know, and, and, uh, we would just be shooting the shit, you know, wherever, you know, uh, 
wherever we happen to be, you know, and, and, um, we would just chat about this and that. And, and, you know, the songs, you know, lyrics are, are basically about, um, me when it, growing up in Orange County and, and, you know, certain things I was involved in at a certain part of my life, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, uh, and, and that's what the lyrics are about. And, and so he told me he wrote it and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, man, that's really cool. You know? And, and, uh, uh, you know, I was stoked because he, he, he was, um, you know, he is one of my favorite songwriters. And I think he's, you know, just a brilliant guy, man. And, and, uh, and then one day, <laughs> one day he calls me and goes, Hey, um, uh, check it out. Uh, um, South Park wanted a song for their, you know, for the comp they're putting it out. And I just, I gave him the Brad Logan song. Is that okay with you? <laughs> I was like, Oh, why, why do you, why do you ask you if it was okay? Well, because that's how he is. He's, you know, he's a, pol- he's oh, a polite, okay. yeah. polite guy, you know? And, and, uh, yeah. You know, um, he didn't want to do it if I was, if I'd have been like, fuck South Park, you know, and, and um, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, no problem. And, and you know, are you sure you want to do that? You know, and, and um, uh, so the rest is history. However, the, there's um, the version that's on South Park with Lars singing is, is you know, the original version. And, de- you know, Tim made demos of it because he was also always making demos, you know. Yeah. And, um you know, they probably have, he's probably have, has hundreds of songs that he's never used just sitting around his house. And, and, um, yeah. Cause it, it does say that this was also part of the life can't wait demos. That was, uh, that had... life won't wait. Yeah. Right. It was, yeah. it was at that period. And, and, um, he was, rec- when he was recording those demos for that, he recorded a version of that with Tim scene, which is, Oh, really? oh yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I love Lars. He's a great singer, but, uh, I mean, you know, I was always a, a big fan of Tim's vocals, you know, because they're just so like, you know, just fucking crazy, man. And, and uh, it's unique. Unique, yeah. yeah. And and uh, so there are two versions. There's his version and, and Lars's version. And somebody suggested once that, ah, oh, you know, someone ought to do a bootleg seven inch of, you know, the Tim version on one side and the Lars version on the other. And, and uh, oh, <laughs> I thought that'd be a fucking great idea. I'm not going to be that guy to do the bootleg version of it, but... <laughs> That's a fucking great idea. If anybody out there wants to do that, you know, I back it. But, uh, <laughs> Tommy Smith, we do run a record label. Yeah, I, I <laughs> seven inches. I, are yeah. I enjoy. Well, I enjoy though. not getting sued. Sure. Oh, sure. I mean, I don't even. I don't even know if those guys would sue. You know, I mean, they're not like the fucking go after you with lawyers kind of guys. You know. And, and... Damn. Uh, when did you roadie for uh, Rancid? Because this was released in like ninety eight. Uh, I would say from the years uh, nineteen ninety five um, to uh, you know uh, end of ninety four to um, uh, about two thousand, about five years. Wow. Oh man! So so you were there for like Outcome the Wolves are the way to like yes to uh, uh, to write before that self titled Rancid two thousand uh, record. Oh that that okay. Side note: that Rancid record is my favorite fucking Rancid record. You, you like that one? one? Yeah, I mean, oh I love. But the thing is, like, I I've always like meet people that they're like, oh yeah, that album is like isn't that good? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like from top to bottom, I know there's a lot of songs. But oh man, that album is so fucking. I mean, a lot good. of people like that record. It's pretty uncompromising, and you know, I, I I think it's cool. Obviously, my favorites are you know, um, let's go, out come the wolves, and life won't wait. You know that the, the, the yeah. periods that I was around them, and so those like songs just you know are part of my DNA at this point, or at least out come the wolves and, and life won't wait. Yeah. Let's go. I was yeah. into before I even knew those guys. You know, I'd seen them play and. And, and I just started working for him. It was oh. really random. You know, I didn't know them or anything. And a friend of mine was there, was there, um, guitar roadie. And he's like, Hey, you know, we need, we need somebody, you know, we had one guy leave and, and, uh, you know, you want to do it, you know? And he called me from like Germany, you know, I got a phone, I got a message on my fucking phone recorder voicemail thing one night when I come home. And, and cause this was the fucking nineties or, you know, mid nineties. Yeah. And, and, uh, I thought he was shitting me, you know? And, and so I call him back in fucking Germany and he's like, no, we need somebody. And, um, and I know you yeah. play guitar. I hadn't done anything like that before, but he knew I played guitar and I could tune a fucking guitar. And I was like, sure. Yeah. I'll give it a try. <laughs> you know, I got, got the, the job. job. Yeah. You know, well, it was a sink or swim kind of thing. It's like, you know, I met him in Seattle and, you know, um, and, uh, 
just like, here you go, motherfucker. And, and, you know, just threw me out to the, to the fucking lions. And, and, uh, that was yeah. right after, um, outcome. The wolves had just come out, man. And, and, uh, um, you know, the shows were just fucking total insanity. And, uh, uh, yeah. you know, and I had to like, you know, work with like just people like fucking stage diving all over me and, you know, shit getting crazy. And I, I loved it. I mean, because that's my, <laughs> that's my preferred, that's my safe space, you know, is, yeah. is in the middle yeah. of fucking chaos. And, and, um, and it worked out, you know, and I hit it off with all those guys and, and particularly with Tim, you know, and, and, uh, ended up renting a room from him at his house, you know, years later and, and live with him with him for a while. And, and, uh, it was just really cool, man. He's a big influence on me, you know? And from there, uh, cause he, so Hellcat records was made in 97. The first F minus record was released in 99. He did. He had a couple seven inches before that, right? The, 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 the full length with the first full length was 99. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I, I, we did. We we had two. We had two seven inches before that. We had one. Yeah, it says uh, F minus nineteen ninety nine self titled. That was that under Health Hellcat because I know Suburban. Yeah, the, the first one was two. Yeah, all the full, the three full lengths were were all on the Hellcat. And uh, when did uh, F minus form? Uh, probably ninety seven. Um. Oh, while well, well, you were still roadieing right. for Rancid. in between tours, um, you know, I didn't really live anywhere for for a few years, and and because uh, um, I was always gone, you know, and and yeah. uh, um, um, in between tours, I, I uh, you know, I put this band together, and and uh, you know, I got just hit some people up that I that I knew that that I liked, as you know, um. Uh, you know, whether you could play or not didn't really matter. And, and, uh, um, it, uh, although I knew I wanted to play with a drummer who was, um, you know, the drummer's the most important part of any band to me, you know, and, uh, you know, <laughs> yes, and, and I wanted to play, yeah, and yes, I wanted we to play are. with a drummer who fucking killed it, you know, and, and, and that was a uh, aimer, you know, every drummer that ever played in F minus was great, really, you know, they were all just so good. Um, and the first guy was Amory Smith, um, who was in uh, suicidal, um, he played on the first suicidal record and, and, uh, um, he was in, played with the Beastie Boys for a while and, and, you know, just, we're still friends to this day, but yeah, we, we did two seven inches. We did one for Hellcat that we recorded in Tim's house. Um, and then, uh, we did one for this label called Pilato, who was this, um, kid from, uh, Costa Mesa and, and. Nice. It, you know, we just he we had didn't know him, and just a, a kid that asked us if we wanted to put out a seven inch. We were like, "Shit, fuck yeah!" You know, you're. Oh, damn. go ahead. I. No, I was gonna say like, damn that, that has never happened to any of my bands. Like, no one's ever just like, hey, For, can we I put out a seven inch. I we, well, we also run a up. label. I know so. we run. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I there's a difference between you putting it out us as a label and somebody else asking you. Well, yeah. you know, it's the same thing that, that you guys do. I mean, you, you know, you see a band you like and you're just like, Hey, you know, you want to put out, and I rent, you know, I, I had my own label for a while too. And same thing, like, um, you know, and, and there was no competition because nobody fucking gave a shit about us. So it wasn't like, <laughs> well, you know, we got to see if this deal with so and so works through first, and and you know, yeah. <laughs> it was like he was the only one asking, and we were like, "Fuck yeah, somebody cares, yeah, you know, take what you can get." Right, right. Oh, Suburban Blight is would, one of my favorite records of all. Would you oh, be? You. Would you feel? Would you feel honored if we said that the label is named after the F minus song? It, but it's not though. I but so I you, I no, tell you, you, you can tell me that though. Thank you. I, t- I I tell people it is. It's yeah. technically named after the assorted jelly bean song because that was oh, Fern's thinking. Damn. But if we if we talk to a Scott like a ska fan, it's the assorted jelly beans. If it's we talk F-minus to a hardcore song. fan, it's excellent. The Thank you. Song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that works for me. <laughs> so yeah, what a uh, perfect. Do, what, so being that you, you've been in like Orange County punk for a, a, a quite a while, what is, what are some things active now that uh, that are still around that, that or have changed or are just completely gone that you remember? 
it's from like, from when I was a, a kid going to shows or, or what, yeah. in what context do you mean? Because nothing's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a, of just a venues, uh, record stores, like things like that. You know, there's nothing around. Le- there's nothing left. I, I think, you know, as is the case these days, you know, a lot of the shows that were happening um, when I was a kid, the punk shows that I were going to, that I was going to were, they were happening at places that, you know, they weren't venues. It was like, Oh, there's a show at this fucking movie theater. Oh, there's a show in this warehouse, you know, Oh, this restaurant's having a show. And usually these shows would happen once and shit would get crazy and they would never have another show there ever fucking again. Right. Somehow that, you know, bands would talk their way into the, you know, into the venue and, and, in, in these days, you know, things were like t- um, a lot more chaotic. There wasn't like, you know, as as is the case with any DIY show, there were no, there was no security. There was no like constraints, man. You could just yeah. fucking, you know, we just everybody policed police them. You know, the scene policed itself, right? And and uh, um, but shit would get crazy. I remember going to um, there's there's a theater in Santa Ana called the Broadway Theater in downtown Santa Ana. And uh, I remember going to it one, it was a new year's Eve show, probably new year's Eve, like 1981 or something. And, and uh, T it was TSOL social distortion, um, maybe China white lost cause. Um, I remember the bill, but nobody played or maybe what, like one band played, you know, the what? first band. And then uh, there were, t- it was just a small like movie theater and there were too many people in there. And the, the guy who was, um, uh, putting on the show, um, said, Oh, they're shutting down the, sh-, you know, the, the, the cops are here, they're shutting down the show. And he just bailed with the cash box and all the money. Oh, and so, shit. so nobody got refunds. None of the bands got paid and there was a total fucking riot, you know, and the place just got d- destroyed, you know? And, oh. and, uh, I remember that there was a popcorn machine cause it was a movie theater and, and, uh, somebody smashed the glass and there was just popcorn flying everywhere around and, and uh, just total chaos, you know, um, uh, Jack from TSOL had was standing in the lobby. Sorry, Jack had, had a broom in his hand and that's how it started. And he threw this broom, like a spear at this fucking clock behind the, the popcorn counter and the clock exploded and then all hell broke loose. And, and, uh, God. because everybody knew you know the show wasn't uh the show wasn't going to happen so you know what do we got to lose man and and uh um uh but stuff like that would happen right and so there was never another show there you oh, know and, and maybe there was but not to not to my knowledge but um i think you know one of the only things yeah. left uh one of the only things left from, from around then is vinyl solution records is still around they've yeah. been they, they've been there for a long time um, but a lot of the record stores in general are gone, you know? Um, and, and, uh, even some of the venues that had shows on a regular basis that were like legit venues are just fucking gone, man. You know, um, uh, Cuckoo's Nest, Golden Bear, um, you know, tons of places in LA. I went to, used to go to the whiskey all the time. Whiskey's still there, but you know, it's, it's a fucking it's yeah, yeah, it's definitely. a shell of its former self, you know. Olympic Auditorium is still there, but you know, it's just you know nothing. So, does that answer your question? I'm sorry, I don't even know. No, if no yeah, it does. It does. Feel yeah. free what to if, cut cut me off if I'm getting fucking <laughs> long winded, man. What about uh, what about like the Doll Hut? The Doll Hut, I wasn't. That wasn't until way later. I, I oh I really? Go, yeah, I didn't go. You know, I think it had been around for a long time, but I didn't start going there till. Um you know, the, maybe the, the mid nineties before I, I, uh, um, started working with Rancid. I was a, a bartender there for a little bit and, and, uh, um, you know, bands would play there and I, I knew the, uh, the owner, Linda, who was running it and, and, uh, and she was really cool and a, a total supporter of the arts and, and, and of bands. And, you know, I guess a lot of grown up you know, punks were going there, um, not asshole grown up punks, you know, um, and and so it kind of became like a uh, that kind of hangout, you know, um, yeah. for guys that you know every night of the week, <laughs> kind of guys like, well, fuck, I'm not going to sit at home, you know, and and um, Just go hang out at the doll hut. 
Right. So I saw a lot, so, you know, I saw a lot of bands there too, you know, working there. Uh, did you only roadie for Rancid or did you roadie for anybody else? Any other bands? Uh, yeah, I, I ended up through, uh, that was the first band I ever roadied for. And, and through doing that, you know, the way that world works is, you know, you don't really like fill out a job application or maybe you do nowadays, but then there was, you know, you just, it was word of mouth thing. And, and people would see like, you know, you'd get to know other, other crew guys. And, and, uh, so I would get calls to, to, you know, Oh, Hey, you're, you're done touring with Rancid. So, you know, social distortion needs a guy, you know, for, for these dates. And so I, I wrote it for them for a while, um, in, in the late nineties and, and, uh, no effects, uh, for a little bit, um, offspring for a little bit and a couple other, you know, bands that, that, uh, were outside of the punk scene, you know, I did stuff with and, and, uh, just kind of did that for, you know, most of the nineties, I had, you know, no idea I'd ever play in a band again, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that, that was the furthest thing from my mind. I'd been in bands when, uh, you know, when I was a kid, you know, the eighties and stuff, but, um, I had no desire to ever go back to it until um, F minus really. It's like somebody needs to do something like this. And there was nobody doing something like that. And so I was just filling a void uh, for a kind of music that I wanted to hear, yeah. you know, and, and that's what that was. I didn't, ex you know, I knew it wasn't going to be liked, you know, and, and, uh, um, but it was what I wanted to hear. And it was, it was what I felt was fucking needed you know, at the time. And, and, you know, there was hardcore was, was, um, you know, like there was a, all the old bands from the eighties, you know, had were gone, you know, and especially doing short, fast sort of, um, uh, you know, blasts like, you know, uh, negative approach and early agnostic front and, yeah. and, and, you know, minor threat. And, you know, there was nobody fucking doing that. And, and, uh, um, you know, uh, the hardcore had become like really like technical and involved and, and, uh, um, it just seemed to, and, and there were bands that I liked, I mean, but you know, I really liked sick of it all and mad ball and, and, uh, yeah. you know, I, li I liked those bands, you know, but I just, you know, uh, I was like, man, I, I just, I just wanted to do something that was like super gut level, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and I totally was, you know, inspired by all of that early, early eighties, hardcore, New York, hardcore, and, and particularly negative approach and, and, um, you know, victim in pain and, and, uh, <clears throat> minor threat and, and just super simple, super short, you know, just fucking like pure, uh, you know, um, uh, no thinking behind it, just total fucking gut level type stuff. And, and, um, and there was nobody doing it. I know I fucking looked for bands like that. You know, I scoured, you know, there was maybe a couple of bands here and there, Kill Your Idols. There was a band from Holland uh, called, um, ah, fuck, I can't remember the name of them. They had a great name too, and I can't remember. But there was few and far between bands doing sort of like a return to, you know, um, Roots Hardcore, you know. But, I, you know, it wasn't meant as a tribute. It, it, you know, I wasn't doing like some nostalgia you know, some walk down fucking memory lane, you know, you're putting it, your own it, spin to it. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and it wasn't, you know, the lyrics weren't youth crew and they weren't, uh, you know, um, you know, they were from my own perspective and, 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 uh, uh, you know, talking about, um, things that, you know, uh, uh, were going on with me and, 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 you know, the, the scene around me and, and, uh, um, the world around me. And, and I was taking a lot of, influences that didn't belong in in hardcore quote unquote belong quote unquote and, and i was throwing them in the fucking pot man and, and uh, just mixing things up that i liked and and you know trying to put um we tried to put our own take on it you know um and, and certainly uh there wasn't really um you know <laughs> we didn't fit anywhere you know we couldn't there wasn't like five other like-minded bands that we could play with so we would play on any fucking bill that would have us yeah. you know fucking ska show no problem you know, <laughs> fucking metal show yep cool you know whatever fucking wacky you know punk show you know gutter mouth yep no problem you know whatever man and, and uh we played we would say yes to everything you know um, oh man 
you guys you know, stick was... out in Orange County? Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, I think that that um, there was a you know we would play L.A. quite a bit too, um, and and uh, you know there was definitely some some kids that um, that were into it, you know, and yeah. that felt the same way we did, you know. Uh, Carry on, Carry on was another early um, band from L.A. who was uh, who just fucking blew my fucking face off. They were great uh, and. Uh, guys from carry on ended up being in like terror and, and, uh, um, you know, other went on to be in, um, uh, Todd, who is the singer of nails that Ben nails was in carry on. Yeah, and, and, really? and, oh yeah. They were fucking phenomenal. I've known him since he was a little kid, you know, and, and, um, uh, his dedication to brutality has been unwavering. You know, I, I really fucking admire that guy. And, and, uh, but there were some kids that were definitely feeling what we were putting out there, you know, that felt the same way as, as we did and, and just had nobody to fucking, you know, hear it from. And, and, uh, but also there were a lot of people that had just did not get what we were doing and did not fucking like it one bit. And especially, <laughs> and especially since we were on Hellcat, we started getting these bigger shows opening for like huge fucking bands. We had absolutely, no place being there or maybe we had every reason to be there um <laughs> and and we would play these like you know opening for like we opened for the offspring one time and, and we opened for the transplants and we opened for afi and, and uh crap. we were a band's band like other bands dug us oh uh, yeah you yeah. know and, and know all of exactly those what you mean. and all of those new york dudes you know uh, uh, we'd gotten to know like the, the agnostic front guys and, and sick of all guys. And, and so we were right up there fucking alley, you know, and, and, uh, but the crowds were just like not fucking having it, which was great. You know, it was, yeah. very, it, was conf- it was, it was fairly confrontational when we, you know, play with the offspring and people yelling shit at us and, you know, it'd be totally silent in between every song. And, and, um, you know, or at least the opportunities we were giving them where we were tuning up and, and uh, people be yelling shit, yelling shit at, at, at um, Jennifer, or Erica, show us your tits, you know, or Sarah. There was a girl uh, named Sarah who was in the, who was uh, named the band and um, it was our original guitar player. And, and uh, yeah, total like, um, you know, sexist fucking bullshit. And, and uh, it was great to have the, uh, to have that effect on these crowds because that's exactly, we just wanted to fucking bum them out, man. You know, we weren't trying to be cute and we weren't trying to be like, a, it wasn't a fucking gimmick, but um, you know, we were singing about those fucking morons, you know, to them. Yeah. <laughs> and we were wrapping it in a fucking rapper that, that um, they were not fucking ready for, you know? Um, and, and, uh, in a very harsh fucking you know rapping and uh and it was great it was so much reward so much more rewarding than playing in front of uh playing on a bill with five other bands that were you know that we were just like you know it it was like um in that sense it was very real you know and and uh you know here we are fucking direct interaction and and uh and people would yell shit man and and you know we knew we were doing a fucking good job if if people were yelling shit and throwing shit you know, because we did not, we did not want to impress these people, you know, yeah. that that wasn't your crowd, especially like the offspring is, is like such a pop band now. But, like, but see what, that, I mean, those, those guys were, I mean, those guys slugged it out and, sh- you know, you know, Gilman street and fucking shitholes for, yeah. I mean, they oh, played definitely, like, definitely, but compared to le- F minus, but you know, like, there was a le- huge disconnect there. They were a legit band by the time they had a hit record, you know, um, their crowd was, you know, completely, you know, it was like a mainstream crowd, you yeah. know, that had no idea that they slugged it out playing with fucking infest or whatever, you know, and, and, uh, oh, geez. <laughs> which they had, you know, and, yeah. and, um, but you know, infest was gone, you know, all those bands were gone, man. All of that kind of music was, was kind of dead, you know, um, nausea was another big band that was another band that we just fucking loved, you know, um, nausea from New York. And, was and uh, oh, yeah, I was about to ask the New York nausea. Yeah, you know, and the bands understood. You know, the guys in AFI, the guys in in Offspring, the guys in in Rancid, the guys in fucking Sick of It All, and you know, um, and that's who we were playing for. We were playing for people, you know, like us. We were our own, we were our only audience. The band, 
and, and maybe a handful of other social misfits and, and, you know, fucking malcontents that, that, you know, um, saw the fucking merit in that stuff too. And, and then bands like, you know, um, you know, like carry on, were in a whole different league. I mean, those guys could, you know, uh, th- their songs were constructed really well and they could play, you know, I mean, it was the same kind of thing. It was very roots oriented and very primal and very brutal, you know, and kill your idols too. I mean, they were from, uh, um, long Island and, and fucking great, man. Uh, I got, I got to check all of these out. Yeah. Yeah. We ended up touring with, you know, kill your idols and we, we toured with the AF. We toured with, um, uh, Bane, we toured with, uh, wow. um, actually that was a tour, all of us on the same bill. It was Gnostic front Bane, kill your idols F minus in the fucking deep South. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you, it was like Florida, fucking Mississippi, you know, fucking Alabama, uh, you know, all that kind of shit. And, and, uh, again, it was like best case scenario. And, and, you know, we would come out and do our thing and, and, you know, these like gnarly skinhead dudes weren't used to seeing like girls come out and play this fucking ferocious kind of shit, you know? And it, and it was yeah. sort of like an assault to them, you know? Yeah. Um, and we weren't being cute and, you know, we weren't being funny, you know, uh, it was very serious and, and, uh, we were very fucking dedicated, man. And, and, um, uh, and it was fucking great, man, you know? So, um, uh, and that's why, you know, we'll never do a reunion, man. It's like, you know, because what you can't do is, is, um, you know, the context was everything, Yeah. you know, it, the music is fucking, it doesn't even matter, you know, um, now it doesn't even matter. It's like, what mattered was the time and the place, man, that music at that time, at that place, you know, and you cannot have fucking thousand reunions for a m- fucking millions of dollars could never bring that back, you know? And, and so uh, I'm just gonna cross off uh, the question of is will there be enough minus reunion right now? I'll just cross that off. I mean, I've, you know, hey, maybe for a million dollars, but no. You know, <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm opening up Kickstarter, <laughs> right? I'm opening up uh, GoFundMe right now. F minus reunion. <laughs> nobody is going to pay that ever. Fucking, we will pay that. Said nobody ever. And, and I, I have twenty dollars right now. <laughs> but, you let know, me we, let me check the label funds. We're, <laughs> we're we're asked all the time, you know, and and people hit me up, you know, when I'm on tour with other bands and stuff, and and um, it's just it's not going to happen, man. It wouldn't be the same thing, you know. Yeah. It would just be it would be yeah. like, you know, it would be different. It would be shitty, and it you know it, it's like. You know, you can't bring back that time and that place, man. And and so, you know, um, uh, you know, you got the records now, and 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 you know, fucking enjoy those, man. And and there's some there's some videos I've seen some videos on on YouTube that are pretty cool. I, you know, I didn't know anybody was videoing, and and uh, and they're pretty representative of of you know of what was going down, man. And and uh, and I was really grateful for those connections with those other bands. You know that that like. Um, you know, and every drummer and every band wanted to play with us because it was like, fuck yeah, super hard hitting, super fucking fast shit that that band guys love to fucking play, man. You know, yeah. drummers and and uh, to me, we had fucking we had made it. We had done our job when you know when when um, when people were throwing shit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they were yelling fucking shit at us, man, and and they didn't get it. You know, that, that was success. We had achieved success. Not that we wanted to be hated, you know, who wants to be fucking hated, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's like, we didn't, pr- we didn't go out there with, we thought everybody should feel that it was as great as, as we did, you know, but, um, uh, but it, you know, we also understood that, that, uh, you know, we were filling a gap that wasn't there and people weren't going to get it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, going back to that, the the drums on Suburban Blight are so fucking good. Like, who who did it? Adam Zuckert, right? Adam Zuckert. Yeah. Zuckert. Adam, yeah. Adam Zuckert. Oh, he's so, he's super good. Like, what? Like, uh, what song was it? Forced Identity and uh, Rise of Power. Specifically, those two songs. Like the like the like the semi. Ever heard of Cryptic Slaughter? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that kind of like Cryptic Slaughter type blast beat. Oh god, it's so yeah. good. Adam was oh, great, man. Adam was in in fun, this band Final Conflict. You guys know that band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Adam was in Final Conflict, and and uh, um, uh, I don't even know how, like 
how we met, we met somewhere or somebody said, Oh, you know, um, cause a- Amory had to, you know, Amory played with us for a little bit. And then he, you know, he was on tour with, I think he was touring with the beastie boys. And so they were always gone. And, and then we got this guy named, um, Chris Lagerborg who was on the, on the, um, the first Hellcat, the, you know, the, uh, failed society seven inch. And, and Chris was a fucking monster. I mean, he played louder than the rest of the band. We had to tell him, dude, he got to stop hitting so hard. Her Slow amps are fucking, bit. yeah, our amps were fucking maxed and he was still louder than us. And, oh, and yeah. uh, you know, he's just a fucking funny dude and just, you know, amazing drummer. And then, uh, you know, somebody suggested Adam, uh, Chris Lagerboy ended up being, uh, going on tour with Slayer and being Slayer's like drum tech guy. And, and then, oh, so damn. he did. So he disappeared and, and, uh, yeah. and then we got Adam who was just, you know, personality wise and stuff was, just, you know, a perfect fit, you know, and Adam played on all three of the, the Hellcat full lengths and just did a million tours with us. We would take any tour. We would do anything. We didn't care. With, um, uh, did, was Pick Up Screaming planned to be the final album? Did you guys not want to continue after that? Right. Jennifer had left, uh, who founded the band with me. And, and, um, and, and so when she left, it was, you know, uh, uh, it was kind of never the same. I mean, uh, uh, Josiah who ended up, um, playing bass on wake up screaming was, you know, an old friend of the band and, and, uh, um, he was from Boston and, and super cool, super cool kid. And, and, uh, just, you know, more talented than, than any of us in the band. And, and, uh, and he was great, but, um, you know, without Jennifer and, and then, you know, we had played a bunch of shows and, and, you know, we did, we did that record and a bunch of touring behind it. And then, uh, Erica and Joe who were uh, boyfriend and girlfriend decided they were going to start their own band. And, and, uh, and I didn't want to keep it going without, you know, the people that I didn't want to start getting this like revolving lineup. It's like, it was time to just oh, put yeah. it to bed, man. You know, like, yeah. So we just fucking shut it down. We did, you know, one last show at, at the Knitting Factory, uh, opening for Leftover Crack. And both Jennifer and Joe played. You know, we played as a, as a, a five piece. And uh, and that's it, man. You know, we fucking uh, put a lid on it. Damn. Did you have yeah. uh, did, did you have more music uh, written at that time that just never got recorded, or was that was were you guys tapped out? No, we did. I mean, we you know, um, you know, so being influenced by by Tim Armstrong, you know, I always like to be in the process of, of writing, you know, always, and, yeah. you know, um, making a record or not making a record. It's, it's just like, you know, just continuously. So we, yeah, we had, we had songs laying around, we had, you know, riffs laying around and, and, you know, we had pieces of songs and some of those we put out, like, and some of those, you know, given the boot comps, it was just like demo. It's <laughs> yeah. like a fears of fucking demo of an unfinished song, you know? <laughs> And, uh, and fuck it. We didn't give a fuck, man. You know? Um, yeah. So we had a bunch of stuff and, and, uh, um, you know, that some of that stuff ended up being used for, for, you know, later bands or whatever. And, and, uh, and I still have, t- you know, tapes laying around of, of, uh, you know, rehearsals of songs that, that were, you know, that never became anything. So. Yeah. Damn. I-, I wish we knew like a tape label that could possibly put that out that'd be cool well you know some i mean it's some of them didn't have vocals on it or anything so it would need you know that kind of you know need to be finished up and and, uh so i don't know if it would be any of any value you know i I will literally release whatever (laughs) like i I like that you release what you like yeah exactly we'll put i don't care how unfinished it is like just i'll I'll put it out have you heard time x cube red (laughs) (laughs) i have not by the way tommy Tommy, thank you for the no time shirt. I got it. I got it in the middle. Oh, you finally like, fuck yeah! Thank I you did. for picking that up. It's a great shirt, a great yeah. design, and it's it fits really nice. So thank nice. you. Uh, yeah, Br- Brandon's been using. Uh, I think they're either American Apparel or something, but they're a uh, sweatshop free, which is dope. It, it and and I mean, it, yeah, it's a real, it's a quality shirt, you know, and and uh, um, it's not all boxy and stuff. It's great, man. Nice, you know. Nice, so nice, thank nice. you. Yeah. I think when uh when shows can start happening, I'm gonna I'm gonna get those uh like printed in bulk, and I think I'm probably just gonna sell them at cost or just hand them out to kids at shows. You should. I mean, it's a great shirt, you know. Uh, the fucking hanging clansman. I mean, you, how can you, you can't go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> you know, guaranteed, 
guaranteed to bum out the fucking magas and the and the QAnons and you know yeah, especially oh, yeah. in Orange, especially in Orange especially County especially in Orange, Orange County. County exactly uh so down here in southern uh oh, south OC we've been getting a lot of uh tables of just people selling like Trump stuff just like Trump merch do you get that in North County as well or is it just us down here funny you should say that i saw a guy today i i did my i feel <laughs> I feel like I'm 90 years old. I went to my daily grocery store run. I went, the, <laughs> I went to the grocery store and I was driving down the street and there was a guy parked on the side of the street with a fucking, uh, you know, the whole back of his truck was like a Trump fucking super shop. You know, <laughs> it, it was there, like a tr- Yeah. And, and he just had it set up on the side of the road, man. There, there was one. Uh, as soon as I turn out of my neighborhood, it's right there. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, I, I never seen I never seen anybody buying anything though. You know, it's not like there's a line of people just going fuck yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't ass- seen anybody buy anything. I'm assuming me. they're at least legitimate. Like the the you know they won't get shut down. I'm assuming the Republican Party of Orange County is paying for them. I uh, wondered about that when I when I drove by today. I thought you know I wonder who I wonder if this guy just decided to make merch. You know, he's, he's, <laughs> he's that dedicated, you know, they had flags. There was all kinds of fucking shit. And yeah, it's fucking crazy. Or if that's actually funded by, um, you know, uh, by his uh, campaign in some way, you know, I, yeah. I want to think and I, n- nobody correct me, please, that he it was it's kind of like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> where you put in your own money to get all this stuff and then you're just like yeah. all right here's a here's a hat yeah by the way do you want to sign up kind of right. like that right yeah thank you like, for your service here's a t-shirt a flag and a hat <laughs> yeah he, he's, now if you could just get five other people to sign sell up. more trump hats we will get <laughs> yeah right oh my god yeah. for every 200 trump hats you sell you know you fucking you get a keychain. Oh, it's like a, yeah. it's like you get a keychain. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a middle school uh, uh, magazine scam. Oh, right. geez, those are great. Yeah, fucking, and I uh, I guess, man. I mean, you know, it's it's um, that's the second time I've seen one here in in uh, I guess we're mid county, right? Uh, we're not Huntington. We're not in, Huntington. Yeah, yeah, that would be like the middle of Orange. Oh, here down here. Ooh, middle like- middle west. Middle, middle west because right. you're on the there's ocean a, he's literally the, you're no you can't be any more west there's a north huntington beach and we generally we don't we don't associate with those people you know um, <laughs> <laughs> the other side, the other side, the side it of, takes a, the other side of the city it takes a day and a half to get to you know <laughs> but over the mountain yeah over the sand dune yeah. are you are you are you also uh convinced that orange county is going to kill us all the whole world or the rest of California? The rest of California. It, probably in the the whole West Coast. You know, I mean, I will say this, that, that and, and, you know, I've never been one to defend Orange County ever, you know, and, and I grew up here and, and I always felt it was sort of culturally inferior, you know, to to a lot of other places in the world. And, and, uh, and, and I've been trying to get, get away from here for years, but... Um, you know, I always end up coming back because my family's here. And, um, but I will say this: as much of a bad rap as it's been getting in the news, um, as as being the sort of hotbed, uh, you know, conspiracy theory and fucking anti-maskers and you know, right-wing nutjobs, there are a lot of people here that do not fucking buy into that shit at all. There are a yeah. lot of open-minded, you know, people I know personally. You know, you guys man and, and uh had a lot of kids man the kids don't fucking buy into that bullshit you know so um it's not as as um you know granted it's 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 always been conservative and it's always been you know uh uh sort of a right-wing bastion you know as long as i can remember at least yeah. you know um uh but there was always a fucking underground of, of of people who did not feel that way you know and and uh um uh so I don't know if it'll kill us all. I think that the people that don't believe that way are just not as vocal as the fucking kooksters who do, you know? Yeah. yeah um, but it doesn't mean that they're not here. Yeah. You, do you ever get sketched out being in Huntington and, and that being, I, I feel like the hotbed of at least anti mass COVID activity. I mean, 
to me, it's, it's, um, you know, it's not any different from any other time. There's always just been this contingent of like, you know, um, big truck driving, you know, fucking bro culture, you know, um, like just, um, you know, conservative sort of fucking hicks as long as I can remember. And, and the fact that they, that, that there's a cause for them to rally around now is cute and all that, but it's always been here, you yeah. know? So it's, it's not alarming to any more alarming to me than, than at any other time. Although it, you know, it, it did make me fucking, you know, um, angrier than normal when that stuff was going on downtown. And I went downtown to some of those protests and there was like, you know, a fucking divided line man down main street of like, you know, BLM on one side and, and just, you know, fucking, uh, you know, all lives matter fucking jerks on the other side, man. And, yeah. and, uh, um, you know, and for, you know, they were just using downtown as a focal point, you know, for, for, um, you know, for publicity, I guess, you know, I mean, that's, a, yeah. I guess that's a good place to do it. If you want to do it, it's, it's, you know, um, you know, the Huntington Pier is a landmark, but you know, fucking fuck those guys, man. And, and, you know, there, there was like, um, there was a lot of people on the other side there too, you know? So, um, uh, what was your original question? I don't even know if I answered it. Uh, do, do you feel like Orange County is, is the, is going to be the hotbed that kills us all? Uh, I think that Orange County is doing a great job of, uh, in that sense of, um, uh, um, uh, helping to, uh, um, empower, um, uh, the other side of the coin and to motivate people who may have been just sort of on the fence about it, you know? Um, uh, and, and so I think that that sort of negative publicity, um, uh, it, not negative to them, but that sort of publicity uh, yeah. is is just as much uh, hurting their cause, you know. It, um, if anything, at least the way I see it, you know, because my friends all around the world that I talk to in different countries and stuff are like, "These fu- who are these fucking nut jobs, man?" You know, is that what's going on there? You know, and and uh, it's like, no, man, it's not everybody, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that they're they're doing. Uh, uh, a lot to motivate people to to vote, so that doesn't become um, the, the fucking way it is. You know, that yeah. doesn't become the norm. You know, people are getting fired up, man, and and uh, um, uh, so in in a way, I'm glad that it's happening. You know, because if people are uh, um, getting off their ass to try and you know, vote, voting is the very least you can do, and should be the bare minimum, man. Yeah, you know, it's like you don't you don't got to be out there. You know, not everybody's got to be out there carrying a sign or fucking throwing a brick, but the least you can do is fucking vote. You know what yeah. I mean? Like to, to, to say that it doesn't matter or to just opt out is fucking bullshit, you know, to me. Right. Yeah. It's, no, it's, one of the, with you. Yeah. it's, it's one of the few fucking things that we could, you know, it's the bare minimum of things you can do, you know, to try and affect a change for, for the positive or, you know, keep the fucking, you know, scales from tipping too far you know, from ending up like fucking Belarus, man, you know, yeah, like that shit's fucking crazy that's going on out there. And, and, uh, and we've seen little pockets of that kind of stuff here, you know, and, and if you don't know what's going, you know, Belarus is like, um, you know, Eastern Europe and, and, uh, um, you know, look into it and, and, uh, um, you know, they just had a super rigged election go down and, and then, you know, rioting after that. And, and then, you know, uh, a police pushback, you know, just total brutal fucking stormtrooper pushback. And, and, uh, you know, the other candidate had to be, uh, you know, exiled to, you know, out of the fucking country. And it's just insane shit. I could totally, it's like, holy shit, man. I could see that happening here, you know? Yeah. If, if, if you know, if people don't, um, you become involved, man, you know? I don't know, man. I'm soapboxing, but, uh, um, you guys, you know, you're on the same page. No, yeah, we are. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, I'm, I I'm did, preaching. I'm pre- preaching converted. You know. I there's probably a couple dumbasses who listen to this podcast. I shouldn't call them dumbasses. <laughs> probably no, some, man. That, there's some probably fence sitters who will listen to this. Yeah, and and maybe people that 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 you know are are waiting to be enlightened. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so, you know, it, it's like, I, you know, I would never want to dismiss the capacity of somebody to change their mind or change their beliefs. You know, I, I think that, that we have to be careful to allow that man. And, yeah. and, 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 uh, because that can happen, you know, and, and, uh, um, and, and I've seen it happen. I've seen like, you know, um, um, you know, former fucking, you know, Nazi skinhead dudes go, you know what, man, my beliefs that I had, that I had were fucking bullshit. And, you know, um, and I've had my eyes open and I no longer live like that. And I don't believe in that kind of stuff. And, and you know what I mean? And you've seen it. There's like, you know, fucking shows on TV of like guys getting swastikas removed and stuff. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. uh, that kind of stuff can happen, you know? And I think that, that we have to allow for that too. And, 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 and you know, it's one thing to be angry and, and to be vocal and stuff. And, and, you know, we don't want to forget to be human and, and that, you know, what in a, you know, a better society would be, you know, just fucking, you know, more love and tolerance. And so I don't want to lose sight of that. Well, well, you know, because like I fucking hate a lot of the shit going on and it gets me really fucking pissed, man. And, and, uh, but I don't want to lose sight of, of what the, the fucking, my core beliefs are which are fucking love and tolerance you know yeah and, and that's what we're saying when we're saying fucking smash fucking nazis is you know fucking down with that you know those that intolerance right it's like yeah. fucking no good man so we don't want to become the enemy i don't want to become the enemy I'm, I'm sorry i'm not speaking for you guys or for anybody else you know i don't want to become the enemy in my own prejudice against you know um you know certain groups of people even if i believe that i'm in the right you know it, there's yeah. a fine there's a fine line you know i think yeah and there's you no, know you. you know there's a bunch of fucking classic literature and twilight zone episodes of you know people seizing power in the name of good things and becoming the the, the thing that they fucking were been fighting against you know all their lives so um, some of those speeches on, you know, in the, the, the Democratic Convention were were pretty fucking inspiring. I don't know if you guys watched any of those things. I watched a bit of it, yeah. Yeah, I saw a little bit here and there. I don't want to get in a super political fucking, you know. Do you want to do you want to derail and talk about a bunch of bikers in South Dakota? <laughs> I was. Let's talk. I, to, yeah, I was. A, I was down to derail a, and talk about Steve Albini and how we recorded the last. F minus album. Yeah, ask me some stupid questions, you guys, please. <laughs> All right, you uh, know? Does Steve Albini smells like he looks? Steve Albini is awesome. I really loved fucking hanging out with that guy. He he was uh, you know, I didn't know him before we recorded with him, and and uh, um, you know, it was Jennifer's suggestion, and and uh, um, and and you know, we found you know anybody can record there. He, they have a website, Electrical Audio, and and uh, you know, you don't have to be some you know, fucking special, you know, connected band or, you know, anything to, you know, anybody, you know, he, he would say, I could pick up the phone and literally anybody could be on the other end of it from the bar band down the street to fucking, you know, members of Led Zeppelin or whatever, you know, and, and, uh, and, and he doesn't, you know, um, look down his nose at anybody and, and, uh, He's just great, man. He he was a real down to earth kind of fucking dude with a, just a fucking sick sense of humor and and you know um and he would talk openly about anything like oh, you know what was recording Nirvana like and he would fucking tell us stories about it you know and and uh, not in a I'm so great kind of way he'd go well well this is you know this is what happened and this is what it was like and blah 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 yeah and and uh, um. And he was just, I, you know, I did two records with him that, that, that last F minus record and then leftover crack did, did one with him too. And, and, uh, you know, it's just, we stayed there, you know, at a studio, he's got like band rooms and, you know, it's like a hundred extra bucks a night. You can fucking stay there too, you know? And, and, uh, really? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at the rates right now. Studio a, I don't know what it looks like. Sex $600 per day. Studio B $400 per day. Wow. I that... get Steve Albini to engineer. It's $900 a day. Yeah. And studio one studio was all wood and brick and the other studio was all metal and glass. So it was two completely, you know, opposite sounding rooms, you know, and the metal and glass room was just super aggressive. <laughs> and then the, the brick and, and uh, wood room was like 
I guess, you know, warm or whatever the fuck that means, you know? And, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a weird engineer term. Yeah. Like I can't really tell the difference between any of that shit, but, uh, um, you know, the, the, the metal and glass room was like echoey and the other room wasn't, you know? Oh yeah. Also this website is like the most mid 2000s things I've ever seen in my life. He never updated it. I don't think he ever did, but, uh, Oh, the, okay. This kind of tripped me out under booking and raids. We don't require a demo from you before you book your session. Yeah. They don't give a fuck, man. You want to record? Come in and record. Boom. Here's our rates. Same rates to anybody. Led Zeppelin pays $600 a day. Fucking Crub Vision pays $600 a day. You know what I mean? Damn. Yeah. I don't want to pay $600 a day. I don't have that kind of money right now. I just... Right. I, it is Studio B, Studio B, four hundred dollars a day. Let's Those are cheaper than what we paid. His rates have come down. So, oh wow, really? yeah, yeah. Holy crap! Is he, is he? Do you think he's is he less in demand? Is it because more people? Uh, no, actually, you know what? Actually, maybe not because we did the we did the rate with him as the as the recorder engineer. Yeah, as the engineer. Oh. So it it was it was nine hundred bucks a day, and then with the the band rooms, it was a thousand dollars a day, and we did uh, F minus did theirs we did ours in two days. We had two thousand dollars that that Hellcat had given us. You know, they'd given us an advance, and, and you know we spent some of it on plane tickets to get there, and then uh, and we stayed there, and and it was like two thousand dollars to record uh, um, Wake Up Screaming, and uh, but it was. He, he's a fucking maniac, man. I mean, he would get up at noon. We'd start at noon and we'd go till midnight, you know, 12 hours fucking. Oh, my God. 12 hours straight, no breaks. He wouldn't leave the studio, you know. Oh, this is in uh, Chicago. In Chicago yeah. Illinois. So he doesn't fuck around, man. It's like you're paying for him. He's fucking working his ass off. And he does all of his like everything was recorded on tape. He would splice everything by hand. You know, if you wanted to wow. cut out a part, he would whip out the scissors, cut out the fucking tape. You physically know, cut it yes yeah yeah and then, holy shit yeah and then you know sew it back together and and uh uh not literally so but um uh you know splice, splice it back, back together and and uh and it was fucking great to watch him work man you know his and, his st- his style was uh all of you guys play at once right we did except for the vocals but we played it once and then did you know some guitar overdubs maybe here and there and, and vocals um, but yeah, it was us playing all playing at once. Wow. Holy shit. That is insane. Uh, when, since you said that you didn't know Steve Albini before who, who recommended going to electrical audio studio? Uh, I believe it was Jennifer, the, the bass player of, um, oh, okay. of, uh, uh, F minus and, and, and then Erica's, uh, um, you know, Erica comes from a family of, uh, like audio engineers and you know her dad was like in this big 60s sort of band and and so she comes from like a music family and and uh and they had some common ground you know they were talking yeah you know while we were in there and, and um but we didn't think it was possible it's like you know that guy had done a bunch of records that i was a big fan of you know and and uh and it was like oh there's no way we can record that guy recorded fucking you know all these bands and all these you know big records and and you know what would he you know, we wouldn't stand a chance of getting in there. And then we found out that that was actually not the case at all. <laughs> that his studio, oh. so studio's open to anybody. You know, it's a very, very DIY and, and, you know, punk approach to everything, really. You know, he, he oh, man. you know, he really, you know, believes in that, um, you know, those sort of ethics. And, and, uh, um, and, you know, I was really inspired by the guy. And, just, and he's a fun guy to hang around with. You know, he's from fucking Midwest and, He's fucking cool, you know? I had no idea. I thought you had to, like, be super well-known, have, like, label backing and all this other stuff. Because he's, like, recorded Nirvana, Slint. Slint, like, Pixies. All these bands. Yeah. Fucking Jawbreaker. Fucking... He's recorded more albums than he remembers ever recording, you know? Yeah. Uh, Fugazi, you know? Um, uh, you know, just fucking and on and on and on, man. Uh, you know? Jesus was- Lizard. What was the uh, what was the uh, fuck world trade session like? That was different than 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 F minus. F minus, we would all go in and play at once and, and just bang it out, you know. Um, 
uh, lift over crack operates on a, in a different way. You know, um, it was done in sessions and it, with not all of us together at the same time. And, and, uh, you know, it's kind of Sturgeon's band and his baby. And so, um, you know, he sits in the driver's seat and you know, everybody comes in and does their things. And, and, you know, we, we work out, you know, the basic framework of the song, you know, before going in the studio and then, uh, you know, he'll go in and kind of work, um, side by side with the engineer and put it all together. So I went in just for a couple of days and played all my guitar parts and then bailed kind of thing. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't even there at the same time as, as, you know, the drummer, so to speak, you know, and, and, um, so totally different, different way of, of recording it, you know. How, um, how, so you, you being from Orange County, how did you end up playing in, in New York band left over crack? Uh, well, I was, I worked at Hellcat. I was, um, you know, when Tim started Hellcat, he's like, uh, I'm starting this record label and, and you want to work there? And I was like, fuck yeah. You know, and, and, uh, <laughs> Um, you know, I needed something to do in between tours. And, and, uh, I remember telling me, um, you know, I want to sign this band called choking victim, you know, um, I don't know where to find these guys. They're, you know, in, in you know, um, amidst the squats of, of the lower East side of, of Manhattan. And, and, uh, you know, all I have is a phone number for the singer, you know, your job as Hellcat employees to go out there and find this fucking guy and, and, uh, no fucking way. see if they want to do a record, you know? And, uh, and so I did, you know, uh, I, I fucking got a plane ticket, went to New York city and, and, uh, had a phone number and, and I, you know, I fucking called from a pay phone, you know, and left a message at, 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 at Sturgeon's with Sturgeon's mom, it was Sturgeon's mom's phone number. Um, Hey, uh, I'm looking for Sturgeon and, you know, my name is Brad from Hellcat records and tell him to call me. And, uh, you know, we, you know, probably played tag for a bit. And, and then I, you know, we had designated a time and a place to meet, which was in, uh, on uh, St. Mark's place in front of the old, uh, there was this club there called um, Coney Island high, you know, I mean, in front of Coney Island high fucking 12 noon. And uh, you know, this was before cell phones and, and computers and whatever were like really yeah. before cell phones even, but computers weren't even really a thing yet. And, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I met with him and, and uh, you know, started breaking it down to him. Yeah, you know, uh, Tim wants to record you guys and, you know, let's start, you know, do, while you into doing it, first of all. And then they had to talk about it and, you know, decide if they wanted to do that. And and, uh, and then we just kind of put it together, you know, and I went back and forth a few times and until <clears throat> this was choking victim <laughs> until uh you know, we came out, uh, myself and, and this guy named Mike Trujillo, who was, uh, worked at Epitaph, um, had like a little rack, you know, outboard rack of recording gear. And we went and recorded it, um, at, uh, the squat that, uh, squirt, the drummer of choking victim lived at we recorded it in his, in his room. Um, it's all in the book. Did I mention the book that I'm writing about left? I forgot. Path? I was going to bring it. I was going to, I was going to say, and is this in the, is this in the book you were writing, Brad? This is a great segue. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, I'm writing an oral history. Uh, I guess that's kind of a, a contradiction in terms of, uh, uh, but <laughs> I'm putting, I'm putting together a book. It's an oral history of leftover crack. Uh, it starts with the end of choking victim and goes to, um, uh, constructs of the state. Uh, you know, and it's all of that, you know, uh, all of the uh, um, the fucking wacky adventures, you know, and, yeah. and you know, I talked to, you know, everybody in the band, obviously, and, and uh, um, you know, everybody around the band that I could find and, and people that have worked with the band and, and uh, you know, there's a ton of fucking pictures in it, you know, from, you know, out of our personal collections and, and uh um, you know, it's it, the, the working title is the good, the bad, and the leftover crack, and that's you know essentially what it's going to be. You know, it's yeah. it's you know the good, the bad, and the left. You know, it's all of the fucking shit and all of the good stuff too. You know, uh, it's not like a um, this book like championing how fucking great we are. You know, because anybody that knows the band and knows the history of the band knows that you know, the band is fucking, you know, very polarizing, either loved or fucking hated. And, you know, a lot of fucking yeah. mishaps and, and, um, you know, hurt feelings and whatever, and, and, uh, yeah. mixed in with, you know, uh, th these great ideals and, and, 
you know, good things too, you know, and, and, uh, which I think, you know, I've, I've always considered myself, uh, you know, in a, like almost an outside entity, you know, just a, a fan of the, of the band, you know, and, and, uh, have never really, uh, cause it's always been Sturgeon's thing really. And, yeah. and uh, Oh, to, going back to your question. So after choking victim broke up, um, they broke up during the recording of, of, uh, no gods, no, no managers. And, and, yep. uh, after they broke up, you know, we all went our separate ways and, and you know, I didn't hear from surgeons for a while. And we had become friends though, through, through, um, you know, getting to know him through, through Hellcat. And, and, um, you know, and he called me one day and was like, Hey, I'm, you know, I want to put this new band together and I want to call it leftover crack. And I've been, you know, making some demos and, you know, I'm going to send you some and let me know what you think, man, if you want to play guitar. And, and, uh, and he did. And I was like, Oh yeah, fuck. Sure. I'd love to. Um, uh, you know, and I already was in F minus. He knew I was in another band and I was still touring and, you know, I wasn't really even sure leftover crack was going to be a real band, you know, yeah. and I don't even, I don't even know if he was at that point, you know, um, he was just gathering people that he had liked and met and, and, uh, you know, was throwing a band together, you know, built up of that. And, and, uh, um, and that's how, you know, I, I came to be in that band. He, he was actually living in Montana. He wasn't even in New York city, um, when this happened, you know, and, and, um, then he went back to New York and, and I moved to New York city for a while. And, and, uh, you know, except for like a brief part of, uh, you know, period of time where I lived in New York city as well we've never lived in the same city, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Really? Or at least, you know, um, uh, myself and the rest of leftover crack. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I was either living here, I lived in Lawrence, Kansas for a number of years and, and, uh, um, but it didn't matter, you know, because we we're all like, you know, travelers and stuff. So we could figure it out and meet up and, and, you know, um, and that's what we do. I'd either go to New York city and, you know, rehearse or, you know, stuff with them there and, and, uh, and hang out, Be, you know, New York city is like my second home and, and, yeah. uh, uh, or we would just meet somewhere and, and go on tour, you know, meet in England with no rehearsal and <laughs> just, just, just fucking wing it. it. Yeah. <laughs> for real. You know, wait, hold yeah. up, hold up. You went from orange County to New York to rehearse for leftover crap. Yeah, but it wouldn't be like one day, you know, I would go there for like two weeks, you know? Yeah. Okay. That's would that still, be like for us and corrupt vision. We have issues like just being in the next city over. Well, I had already, I already, been, I had already shit. been living on the road for, you know, uh, I think leftover crack started in 99 maybe. And, and so I'd already been living nowhere for four or five years by then. Did you, uh, did you fly a lot, Greyhound? How did you normally travel all around? Yeah, I flew. Flew. You know, flying used to be cheap. And, yeah. And, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, and so I would just fly, man. It was, you know, $300, you know, fucking round trip. And, and, um, and I was working too. So I, you know, I had money, you know, yeah. touring with bands yeah. or, or working at Hellcat. And, and, you know, I lived like I didn't own really anything you know, a guitar and some fucking records and some, you know, a couple boxes of clothes. But so I lived, you know, very inexpensively. You were able you to know. just stash what you had that's, at a friend's house and, and, and just be able to travel. Right. Right. I, I, you know, when I was working at Hellcat Cat too, I was renting an apartment in, in um, Silver Lake for $300 a month. You know, I had my own apartment. It was super, used to be super cheap, you know, 300 bucks a any- month. Not anymore. <laughs> not, yeah, not anymore. anymore. No. <laughs> not anymore. I I still can't get over that you flew to New York. To well, I've been going to, back. And, I've been going practice. back and forth there for years, man. I had a lot of friends there, and 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 so flying to New York is something I would do anyways. I would go. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Okay. I would, okay. I would, all right. All right. You know, a tour okay. would end in New York, and I would just stay until the next tour. You know, and and uh, um, you know, I liked hanging out there. You know, it's 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 one of my favorite cities, and it's I've been there. I have never been, <laughs> and it's like a second home. You know, it's not as intimidating as it, it's a really easy city to navigate. You know, 
um, and get around in, you know, with the subway. And, and when I lived there, I just, I didn't have a car or anything. I just had a BMX bike and the fucking subway. You can take your bike on the subway. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a uh, it's one of the easiest cities in the world. I think to, to, you know, easy, big cities to get around in, find your yeah. way in. You've never been there before even, you know, speaking of like documentaries, whatever happened with the uh, passion of the cross documentary? I don't know. You know, those guys just like a, abandon it for some reason it, it uh I, I think that uh sturgeon was putting it together with with this guy named chris ryan um who uh was uh the guy filming it and um and and they were working together on it and and there was a point where um uh i left left over crack for a while um when i moved back to california from new york city i was like hey um, I'm going to be on tour, you know, I'm going to just tour with F minus and we're going to like do F minus things. And, and so, um, that's when they got Ezra, you know, and, and, uh, um, so I left for a bit and a lot of it was filmed then. Um, and then when I came back, he was, you know, he filmed it for over like a fucking 10 year period. I swear, man, I just hated having the camera in my face. I don't like being filmed anyways, or having my picture taken. Um, what but, up? You know, what compelled him to be like, Hey, I'm going to document this band. He was like a filmmaker, independent filmmaker guy, you know? Okay. And he, he had a cable show. Uh, Chris Ryan did a cable show in New York city. Um, that he would have bands on and stuff back when there was like, you know, TV was done out of a fucking, you know, uh, you know, a, a TV studio cable, you know, back when there was cable TV. Right. Yeah. Um, and so he had like a, you know, uh, um, a music show and they did some other shit, you know, on there too. And, and, um, and he had had a uh, leftover crack on there, or maybe choking victim on there before. And so that's how he knew he was, uh, the band. And he was in a band too, um, around town, uh, you know, uh, super political, um, you know, ABC, no Rio park shows and, and, uh, yeah. and, and, but you know, they couldn't, they, they ended up not seeing eye to eye on some things about it. So they just let it drop, which is fine with me because there's just some terrible footage of me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I really care about is, yeah, this is a great film. How do I come off? You know, what is my, uh, did you get my good side? Right. Right. And, uh, you know, Chris had a knack for just shoving the camera in your face at like the fucking worst possible times. And I know he was trying to like, I know what he was going for. He was trying to get all these candid moments and stuff, but it's like, you know, you just get off stage or whatever, or you're fucking getting dressed or, you know, you're fucking whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever. Like, just the most inopportune times. Like get the fuck out of my face, man. I'm, I'm trying to take a shit. Get for out, real, of, get out of the know? bathroom. Like, so, uh, but I like Chris. Chris is a good guy. And, and he's, he's in the book too. He's, yeah. you know, he's contributes some, some good stuff. And, and, um, when do you uh when when do you expect to have your book um at least ready? I know publishing's a fucking nightmare. Uh, our goal, I'm doing it. I have a partner, uh, uh, John Gentili, who who is the editor of that um, uh, website, Punk News, uh, out of fuck Philly. Yeah. And uh, uh, did you say fuck him? I said fuck yeah. Oh fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> no, shout fuck shout out to Punk yeah. News and their 500th uh, podcast that you were on. Oh, that I was on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with with Daryl Hall from Hall and Oates, um, uh, and and uh, so he's helping me put it together because it's a big job, man. It's a lot of people to talk to, and and um, um, it's a fucking lot of work. It really yeah, is, yeah, and bet. for one person to do it, for one person to do it, it's it's just impossible, you know. Uh, you are it's possible. It's possible, but it would take like five fucking years, maybe. And, and uh, we want to have it, it. It's looking like it'll be done in the middle middle of September, oh, nice. at least to be set to be sent off to the publisher, you know, and, and, uh, and then, you know, there's a delay while they edit it and put it together and do their things to it. And, and, uh, but we want to send it, you know, John's a journalist and, and, you know, I write too and stuff. So, you know, we're going to edit it down to where we like it and they may want to, we may have to go back and forth on, on further edits or whatever, but, yeah. um, so it's almost done, you know, and, and, uh, um, 
and obviously there's there's a lot more to my story in it than than anybody else because it's my book you know yeah, and, yeah. and Sur- surgeon's going to do his own book i think at some point which will you know be more about his life and and you know pre uh leftover crack stuff and and uh you know maybe some other leftover crack stuff or whatever yeah. but you know this is um i wanted this to be about you know uh uh, you know about me and 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 you know f minus is covered in it and and uh um but then also that you know i like the format of an oral history because it's uh especially when it you know when it pertains to a band uh, because you're not getting any one sort of slant you know it's yeah. like you know people's you know contradict each other and there's like well i remember it like this well i remember it like this you know and 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 who's to say what's right? It leaves it up to the reader to 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 fucking make up their own mind of how they want to look at things, you know. And it's much yeah. more it's much more a, of an objective way to look at a band uh, and and the the scene around the band, I think, than somebody writing their their um, you know from just from one person's personal experience. Yeah, you know, you're gonna be prone to to how you see things, you know. What is the worst show you ever played? Ah, oh, jeez. I don't know. Um, in in terms of what, right? Because you would have to be a little more specific. Let yeah. Let's go. I will. Ne- I never want to experience that again. Uh, well, there's one particular incident that's talked about in the book. Oh, should, we, should we wait for the book? Because I could ask wait another for the- question. Yeah, yeah, wait for the book. There's there's one in there where something happens to me on stage with Leftover Crack, which is fucking mortifying. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, but normally I like playing shows, period. And, 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 you know, even the bad things are, you know. Are fun. It, yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a fucking gift, man, that I even get to play shows, right? It's like, yeah. who the fuck am I, you know, and, and to play shows or to get to play shows in front of, especially in front of like a large crowd or a festival. It's just like, you know, like a gift, man. I don't belong yeah. there, you know? So even when bad things happen, I got to look at the big picture. It's like, I could very easily have not been doing this. You know, I had a bad drug problem for a lot of years and certainly <clears throat> I was doomed to, you know, one of just a couple of bad endings, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, and that, you know, I pulled out of it and that didn't happen. So really everything from that point on has just been, you know, a fucking uh, gravy, man, really, you know, considering my options were all pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 All right, what is the, uh, what is the worst thing you've ever eaten on tour? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one time, well, oftentimes... I've had some of the best food ever in my life on tour and, and some of the worst food. Um, uh, I'll talk about the worst shit and then I'll talk about the best shit. How about that? Right. Can I do that? Yes. Yeah. We'll do a, a bad uh, in, sandwich. Included in the worst things are fried pizza in Ooh. Scotland. That's like pizza that has been dipped in batter and then dipped in a French fryer of frying grease that had probably been there for 15 years. Who the fuck knows how long, right? <laughs> In, and, in in concept that sounds great right <laughs> Does it, to, am i we, am i alone in this we had to try it because it was legendary it's like oh scotland man you know home of the fried this is before the orange county fair and all that fried shit yeah like it's like oh fried snick fried mars bars and fried pizza it was like what this just sounds so fucking weird we got to try it and it was fucking disgusting it was <laughs> immediately unpleasant and and, oh, uh, God. and then one time I found when I used to eat meat, I found a, a, a fucking chicken leg, chicken claw in my fucking chicken soup just floated oh. to the surface. A black chicken, you know, talon, uh, you know, just floated to the surface. And it was like, oh, man, this is not good. <sighs> um, and then a lot of times, uh, you know, you'll get served on tour. Sometimes you'll get, um, you know, just some nameless bowl of you don't even know what it is, man. And, and uh and there's nothing else to eat and you just got to wolf it down and just hope for the fucking best, you know? Um, we don't wake up shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some weird nameless fucking goulash on top of rice. All right, fuck it. You know? And, uh, 
and hope that you don't get sick. Yeah. Um, uh, but the fried pizza really stands out in the, in the <laughs> chicken and the chicken claw. Um, and the whole time you have a camera in your face. Right now, <laughs> fortu- fortunately, actually, there is a picture of us eating the fried pizza. We took a picture with an actual camera with film in it. And if I can find it, I'll throw it in the maybe throw it in the book. Um, some of the best stuff I've eaten, though, was at squats in, in Italy, man. And, and uh, we, you know, we would do tours of Italy that that were exclusively squats and, uh, you know, maybe six or seven shows. And, and you know, the squat scene in 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 Europe, in some parts of Europe, and in particular in, in Italy, was very organized. And, and uh, um, you know, th- some of these places had radio stations and record stores and fields of just weed and, and you know, um, produce. And, and uh, you know, they were like really self-supporting established collectives, you know, and, and uh, yeah. just had their shit really just together, man. And, and uh, yeah. You know, and some of them would be in castles and, and, you know, old forts. And, you know, I stayed at this one that was like, had a moat around it. It was in this castle from, you know, who the fucking 1600s or whenever. And, in, 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 you know, in, oh my God. Yeah, in, in Rome. And, and uh, I remember we were staying at this one. And, and, you know, and you sit down, the bands would sit down with, you know, the, 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 the residents, man, and, and the people that live there. At dinner time, you all sit down together at these huge long tables, and everybody eats together. and And the food's all like handmade. and And uh, I remember getting up early in the morning, you know, and seeing like, um, you know, this girl like hand rolling pasta, you know, in Italy, and and uh, it was just like, holy shit, this is like amazing, you know. And the and the food's like all organically grown and handmade, and and uh, um you know, and vegetarian, but, uh, and that was just mind blowing, you know, mind blowing to me. It was like, you know, just so like, uh, um, you know, it was very good food. And then it was like inconceivable to me that a guy coming from where I come from would be sitting one day at a, you know, at a, at a table eating hand rolled fucking pasta that, you know, um, some fucking awesome Italian girl had fucking handmade, you know, that like morning. early, yeah, that morning. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, and and uh, it was just fucking mind blowing. And uh, yeah, because because so, we, so we you can tell our spaghetti story. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say we every time we go on tour, and we even like talk to one of our old uh, podcast guests about this. That it we always it, people always make spaghetti for us. Yeah, it's always spaghetti. Sure, there's spaghetti it's, and it's, pizza. Yeah, spaghetti's perfect because it's 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 by default vegan. Yes, it's cheap as shit. But yeah. it's the double edged sword because that can be also the most horrifying shit if it's improperly made. Like if somebody boils some noodles and throws a fucking you know a can of fucking tomato soup on it or whatever, you know, and and <laughs> which has happened to me countless times. You know, oh no, it can oh, be no. like you know you're just like there's no nutritional value to this. It is fucking, this is fucking garbage. And, and it's prison food, you know, and, and I mean, if you're on tour a lot and, and, you know, we would do long tours, leftover crack and, and F minus would, you know, we would tour all year and you can't eat that shit. You can't eat fast food. You got to fucking take care of yourself. Or you'll get really sick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, personally, when I go on tour, I try to go to a, like a Trader Joe's or something so I could get a vegetable, a fruit. Because, like, I can't keep eating Del Taco all the time. You know, it's great on your first couple of tours and stuff. But, like, it, it, you know, if that's all you do, you know, you're going to fucking fuck yourself up, man. Because, oh yeah, you know, like, touring, as you guys know, is like, you know, it, it, it requires, a, it, you know, um, it's very physical, physically demanding fucking thing, right? It's at least at our level. Yeah. Not like we're riding around in buses or, or you know private jets and and shit like that i mean you know fucking van touring it's like you got to take care of yourself or you're gonna fucking you'll crack you'll lose your mind and i've seen people i've yeah. seen that happen to people multiple times it's happened to me do you uh would you yeah, would you gain a lot of weight on tour no i always lose weight I always lose yeah. weight were you just never yeah. hungry yeah i mean and, and you know you just fucking sweating buckets every night and, and yeah and uh you know um you're always on the move man you know 
So uh, I always lose lose weight on tour. Gain it back when I, <laughs> when I get home and I'm home. just a fucking slug. <laughs> I go back to being a slug, you know. So, so worst food, fried pizza, best squat pasta. Italian squat pasta. Yeah. Italian or, squat or, pasta. You know, and I, and, and I've also had some other. You know, I've stayed at, you know, at collectives where you know that the people that live there like just you know they care about what they're eating, man. And I've had some like just amazing like vegan uh, quiches and it, you know or, or I guess that wouldn't be vegan, um, uh, vegan dishes. You know that were just fucking mind blowing. And, and again, I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, some of the squats that I've been to, which were just, you know, abandoned buildings and, and stuff. And, and uh, um, you know, I guess that's how they all start. But, you know, it depends how you want to, um, uh, you know, where you want to go with it. Uh, you know, these people were, you know, very serious about about their, you know, their beliefs and, and uh, um, you know, about living like that and living as a community where everybody contributes and, and, uh, you know, uh, to better themselves and to better the community and not be, you know, fall prey to, you know, fucking landlords or, or, you know, um, you know, fucking urban blight, man, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, politically motivated, you know, activist communities, which were just very impressive, man. You know, I, 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 I hadn't seen anything like that, you know, until I started going to Europe and it was just like, fuck. You know, but also in the winter it can be super, <clears throat> super brutal. Yeah. F minus would always go in the dead yeah, of fucking winter, man. You know, January, February, and, and it was the cheapest to fly, you know. <laughs> and then you, wants, you know why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nobody wants to go, nobody wants to go on vacation in fucking <laughs> January, you know, and, and uh, fucking European vacation where it's just like frozen, you know, but I love it. I love the cold. I love the snow. I was like, I had a, I got a hoodie from this band called Toretta Profunda from uh, Poland, and they had a delay because their squat froze over and all of their paint fro- was frozen, and they yeah. couldn't print their hoodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Bigfoot is real? <laughs> it, it's, do I think that there's a picture of Bigfoot that's real? No, that is nope. fucking. That is a guy in a fucking gorilla suit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. If there's, if there is a real Bigfoot and it's not outside the realm of possibility. I, I, my feeling is that it, it is seriously sm- smart enough to be, to, to, con- to stay well concealed, you know, and to be one step ahead of, of fucking humankind. Yeah. I feel yeah. like so many people have seen him. There's no way he's not real. You know, maybe there's been, <laughs> there's been sightings, but those, some of those pictures, like, come on, man, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? You know, like, like, uh, for real, like the, the Peterson, the, the very first Bigfoot footage uh i don't i yeah i don't know i don't think that i was gonna call that is that the Zapruder film and i was like oh that's no, the that's one not, of uh, john kennedy getting shot in the head yeah, that, that's the Zapruder film. <laughs> like I do i remember. think that do i think that picture of the loch ness monster the famous picture is that real no bullshit yeah I, I, yeah i don't know but yeah i think yeah i think bigfoot's just okay so there's yeah do i think do i think that there are undiscovered fucking species and, and more to this world than we are capable of fucking knowing or understanding. Absolutely. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. There's, a, there's a theory that a uh, Bigfoot is an international, no interdimensional being. And that whenever he feels a camera or like a, he presence disappears. Of a human, yeah, he disappears. Yeah. That's the same. Or the juvie squatch can mimic another animal. So if you hear a bird in the forest, it's actually a juvie squatch making that noise. That's a great super. That's a great superpower to have, man. I wish I had that when I was being filmed for all that fucking leftover crack documentary. <laughs> just, just, the ability to disappear. You, you hear that? You hear the you hear the, the you hear recording click on? And you're like, oh well, fuck. Where's Brad go? Puff of smoke, man. Yeah. Hey, where's Brad? Yeah, totally. I thought like he was in here. Oh, all right, Tommy. You want to call it? Yeah, if you're uh, if you if you if you want to call it, thank you for uh, um, talking with us. Hey, thanks um, for having there... me, you guys. I, I hope I, I hope I gave you some some. Um, I, I, you know, it's an honor to be here, and and uh, and I really approve of of uh, your label and what you guys are doing. And, and I really um, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah man, you. and I, I back it 100. percent So uh, you know, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for asking me. Thank you for yeah. thank you for wanting to come on. And uh, uh, I, I, I know Fern and I both have really looked up to a lot of the projects that you've been involved with. So it, it's uh, we're very thankful that you, you wanted to talk with us on here. It's very yeah, thank it's you cool guys. guys. 
everything is full circle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've been writing solo stuff too. It, it, it be, you know, and the, the, the quarantine has been good to me, man. You know, the lockdown. Yeah. What, been... what, so other than the book, have you been working on other stuff? Yeah, I have. I've, I've been working on a lot of my own music um, and trying to, you know, experimenting. I, I put some of it on band, on a band camp page. I'm just kind of, uh, you know, I'm experimenting with some different sort of, uh, ways to take it. Some of it's electric, some of it's acoustic. And, and I didn't really want to do, um, acoustic, like, um, covers. you know, like he, or, I don't mind doing covers, but my own stuff, I didn't want to be like, Oh, a, a punk guy picks up acoustic guitar and just plays punk songs, you know, like, oh, I know what you mean. I know that. I know that genre. Yeah, man. I wanted to try and take it, you know, do something different with it and take it into some, uh, you know, um, some you know different sort of slant on it so i'm kind of fucking with that and and uh i've been working on some music uh for the adolescents too um we're, you, you know guys, we're trying yeah we're trying to put writing together. yeah 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 oh we're, shit is this yeah. an exclusive oh. yeah well everybody's kind of you know <laughs> off in the corners you know <laughs> about uh, it writing their own stuff and we kind of all throw it in a pot and, and just see you know what you see know what happens yeah you know my stuff might get used it might not you know and and uh um, but I love the band, so I'm I'm just honored to contribute in any way, you know. And to be a part um, of that ex- experience as well. Totally, yeah. I mean, I grew up with that band, and and you know, um, and and t- you know, a uh, couple guys in the band that uh, you know uh, I've known for a lot of years. They, they you know they weren't original members, but they've been in the band for a fucking long time, you know, and yeah. and, um, and been on the scene for a long time, and and um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I've been fucking busy as fuck. You know, it, it, it's like, I love having this time on my hands to, to get things done, you know? So uh, I have yeah, no, short, you, no, no shortage of things that, that I'm involved in right now. But, uh, did, so did COVID really kind of fuck up touring plans for you? It did. On one end, it fucked all that up. But on the other end, it's like, you know, I've been able to, um, you know, uh, experiment with writing, uh, you know, my own music and which I haven't done in a very long time. And, and, yeah. uh, you know, sit back and work on yourself. Yeah, my partner and I, my wife and I started a, a, a you know a, a doggy clothing company called nice. Hellhounds. Um, we have an we have an Etsy shop, and it's you know it's a cult based clothing for for dogs and cats, you know, and and uh, no, I know, and I'm putting um, Bard in. Is, is is there's a plug for you, but you know, <laughs> um, you know, it's just a it, it's not like this. We're starting a clothing line. It's just fucking. We like dressing our dogs up and we're weird animal fucking people, you know, yeah. our, our animals are our family members, you know, and, and, uh, they're not pets, they're fucking family members. And, and so we yeah. like, we, dr- we dress them up and it's like, we just started making fucking, so it's like the F minus principle. It's like, we started making stuff we weren't seeing out there because it's like, Oh, there should be some shit like this, you know? Yeah. And that's what we started doing, you know, uh, um, just, Filling a fucking, uh, um, you know, a gap in 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 our own amuse, you know, <laughs> things that amuse us. But um, um, you uh, you've uh, officially folded Black Noise, correct? Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys, it takes a lot of time and, and it takes yeah. a lot of energy and a lot of focus to to run a record label and to do it right. And, yeah, and and you know, I'm using that focus on 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 different things, you know, um. So, uh, um, being a, you know, uh, a, you know, having a record, record label was great, but, um, you know, I was just, I'm spread too thin, you know? Yeah. Especially when you wanted to just self-release your stuff, just get it right. out. You didn't have to go through any red tape or, you know, you just, just fuck it, do it. Right. Right. But yeah, I mean, more than anything, I just, you know, I, I love having this time to work on my own music, you yeah. know? Um, and my own writing and stuff too, you know, word words, you know, and and uh, I'm gonna start experimenting with like, you know, short stories and and you know, one act plays and just fucking weird shit, you know, and, and just kind of flex the other your your other side of your like artistic abilities. I like writing. I like writing and I like reading, you know. So um uh um it, it's it's the same energy that i put in it to, to my other things but you know it's a different fa- facet of that if that makes any sense you yeah. know what i mean um so i get the same charge out of it 
you know, that I do playing, <clears throat> you know, playing a gig. Right. Yeah. So putting the pen to paper, man, is, is um, um, physically putting a pen to a piece of paper, you know, um, is a fucking thing. I, I really, you know, I fucking really enjoy. So I don't know if I put some shit together, you know, maybe I'll self publish some stuff and, you know, for the, for the fuck of it. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes, but it's good to have this time because normally I would have been on tour for the last six months straight in a couple of bands and I would be a, a fucking just a mess right now, you know? I doubt and just I don't think of anything other than just show, 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 show. R- yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think that, and I've seen a lot of other people do that, you know, the, the, you know, the time of as, as much as it sucks not having gigs and stuff, it's like all of that's going to fucking come back. Right. Yeah. It's not like the shit's gone forever. You know, I've been going to shows since I was literally 10 years old. And it hasn't died yet. It's not going to fucking die. Yeah. So use the time while we have it, right? Because it ain't going to be like this forever. And we'll be we'll be begging to have the fucking. And I remember when fucking COVID was around, and I had all this time to fucking do shit. Now I don't have any time for shit. You know. Yeah. So yeah, you I... just is this giving you a break that you yourself would never have taken? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. So it, it, it was like, um, um, you know, the gods saw fit, man, to, to fucking give me a break, man. Yeah. And, and so I'm grateful for it. Um, again, again, thanks, you guys. Thank you for having me. And thanks for, for the chat. I hope I didn't bore you to death. Oh, no, this was great. This is absolutely fun. No, yeah, this was. Th- yeah, this was, this was super fun. cool. I would say I'll see you guys around town, but. Bro, we'll see you. We'll- We'll see you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I will like. We'll, your see, we'll see you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, see you on Facebook. <laughs> we'll see. You, I'm sure. I'm sure. We'll. I'm sure. We'll, I'm sure we will probably be watching one of your bands at some point in the somewhat near future. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for listening to the uh, No Time Records podcast. Thank you, Brad, for uh, uh, chatting with us for the last two or so hours. Uh, no time for fun. at No Time Records. I'll see you on Instagram at No Time. NTR podcast uh, at NTR pod on Twitter at no time records of C on Twitter, uh, Facebook, no time records of C and just Google it. You'll find it. Look for the, look for the spike logo and listen to F minus. Listen to everyone, everyone go home and stream F minus. 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 Everyone go home and stream F minus.